Hello my crafty friends. Today we're going to be making a very similar folio ephemera holder like this one I shared with you a little while back. I don't have the giant envelope like this one. This was from packaging as I showed you before but I'll be making something very similar using supplies that I have currently. Um, I know not everyone's going to have that the Amazon envelope like this one. Now this one I have is a little too large so I won't be using that one in this project so you can see the difference in sizing. Um, however the one I did show you was the smaller size and I really liked it for that purpose but because I don't have another one the same size I'm going to be using just regular I believe they're 9 by 12 envelopes that um, I'll be using for this project. So I'll show you the steps I used in that ephemera holder um, with this type of um, envelope. And of course, if you happen to have one that's like this one, then you'll be making one very similar. So I'm going to pick this color to make it. I'll walk you through the process. I'll show you step by step what I've done. I will also try and remember to link any of the supplies I used in the description box below. But if you have any questions and I forget something, uh, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. So the first thing you're going to need is book pages. I decided I wanted to do that sort of as reinforcement and, you know, not using up all this paper that could be covered up. I'm also using um, some digitals from Digital Collage Club and some of my own printables as well um, because I had some around and um, I thought I would just put them to good use. Of course you can use your scraps or anything you want to make this. Essentially this is the cover, you know, inside and outside cover. And at this point I'm just going to be folding this over just to give me an idea where my center is. You know, it could be a journal cover as well because of the size, but like I said, I'm making an ephemera holder with it, like a folio style, using book pages and junk mail envelopes. If you have junk mail envelopes, put those aside as well because we will be using those to make the flip outs um, as well. So you can see I'm just, you know, getting some of the pages and lining them up to where I think they will go. I don't really, it doesn't really matter right now what the pages are because you'll be covering most of it up. But usually I say keep in mind what the text has to say. You don't want anything there that, you know, you might read and not want to, um, to see. Of course you can cover it up, but just keep an eye out for that. Um, but for the purposes of the video, I'm just grabbing any of the pages I have right now. And I'm just going to be gluing them down to the inside of this folio cover. I'm not using vintage pages because I would be covering them up and I don't want to use those up just to cover them up. So like I said, I'll be using these pages for this video. And now as you can see here on the side pocket, I'm making sure that I glue on the actual envelope and not the book page because if I were to glue the book page, I would seal that opening shut and I don't want to do that. Um, of course, if you don't want that large pocket to be there, then you can completely close off your envelope and you don't need to worry about that part. So here I'm just trying to measure where my page is going to go. I'll finish covering this whole part up and then I'll come back and show you, you know, what I'll be adding to the cover and then of course decorating our envelopes as we go. So once we have this whole inside cover done, gather your junk mail envelopes. I happen to have these different sizes with me right now. And again, I'm just trying to figure out which ones I'll be using and how my flip outs will go. There's also a part that I wanted to show you for the actual outside of the cover. I will be using another piece of the book page the text there so I can cover the spine a little bit more. That just reinforces it and it also helps me when I'm adding the additional pieces to decorate the cover. I don't have to worry so much about you know making a perfect cut for that front area. It can be um, a little off if it needs to be. So for example adding the piece of text like I said and then you know measuring your pieces that you'll be using for the cover is a little bit easier that way when you don't have to worry about the spine having to 
have anything fold over or be so perfect. And the past one that I showed you, I actually used a lot of my scraps. Again, with um, you know some of my own uh, digitals as well on the front because I had some left over. And so, of course, I ended up doing the same for this one. So this is the fun part is deciding which, you know, of the envelopes you are going to use and, you know, what, um, how you're going to fold them and where you want your pockets to be, etc. I always like to have the windows, you know, facing out so that you can kind of see, you know, whatever you're putting in there. Um, when you first open up the folio and then this is going to flip open to one side and then the other side however um, you know we decide to um, add the envelope it will be flipping out towards the other side as well i do have a few videos showing you how to make very similar folios i will link those below because you you've asked for those videos previously so i have a few of those to show you um, and then you can just get an idea of the different ways uh, that you can add, you know, pockets and tuck spots and different ways to add ephemera to um, an envelope like this one. I really enjoy these projects because you can use a lot of scraps that you have on hand. You get to repurpose lots of items and then you make something really nice out of it that you can either share with friends or you know just kind of keep for yourself to remember the pieces that you have repurposed and reused which is always really nice i also have many tutorials showing you how i like to use junk mail envelopes i've got journals booklets um, just so many different things with junk mail envelopes and if you have not seen those videos i will link that playlist below hopefully you'll get a little bit more inspiration so now I'm just trying to decide how I want to cover this envelope. And I did have an idea that I wanted to use maybe some napkins. And um, I recently did a, a video where I used book pages and napkins. Um, and I've got a really great tip for that as well for using, for separating napkin layers. If you have not seen that, I will link that below. What I'm doing here is adding the cover to the back of the envelope. Now, don't glue it down like I'm doing here. Um, this is a boo-boo and I decided to leave it because it just goes to show you, you know, doing crafty projects sometimes is not perfect. So don't glue this down just yet because we will need to add a piece to this envelope that will help us with our flip out um, on this folio part. So I will realize this very soon as I'm doing this that I needed to add my little hinge so that I can attach my page. And that's the part that you should be doing instead of gluing all this down at this point. So gather um, whatever piece you're going to use. I'm again using book pages because I have so many of those. And I'm just going to make a quick hinge for the envelope, which is what's going to help me attach it to the larger one. And as you can see here again, I just sort of realized what I was doing. I'm letting the, the glue dry so that I can continue this process. So I hope you're all doing well. I've been busy trying to get my new craft space set up and it's actually a little bit more difficult than I thought because once the furniture starts going in, I realize how small the space really feels before I had these ideas of where I wanted things to go and how much furniture I could fit back in uh, but at this point I realize I am not going to be able to do as much as I thought but I will definitely have what I need in there at least my most essential used pieces and um, you know that's what I'm going to to start setting up I am taking some pictures and some videos like before videos and then of course you'll see the after because I figure it's always nice to document these things especially since I don't know how long I'll be in that space but at this point I'm really trying to make it you know as efficient as possible and as uh, nice as possible as well okay so you see here that I've just added a piece of the book page to the back of the envelope and then here I'm just folding it over to make a nice straight line so that when you flip this over, you don't necessarily see that book page. And now I'll just go ahead and finish adding the pieces, making the additional pocket and decorating this envelope. So I wanted to ask you, are you one of those crafters like me that constantly likes to go back and forth between different types of projects? 
I find that while I'm working on one and I'm enjoying the process, of course, my mind starts kind of going to other things that I might want to try. And um, I think maybe for the past few months, I've really been gravitating towards card making. Now, this is not something that I had done before. And of course, you know, once you start watching a couple of videos on YouTube, then the entire suggested um, sort of video uh, list is now to something you had been previously watching. So a lot of the videos I'm getting now is for card making. And of course, I'm really enjoying them and find them so interesting. Um, but I'm also realizing that I've got a little bit of a block when it comes to cards. You know, there's just so many different um, ways that they get made. And usually it's not like junk journal style where you can just sort of tear things and, you know, just add junk kind of to it. Um, with cards, I find that everything is just very clean and neat and measured perfectly. That's kind of what I've been finding with that. So I think I struggle with, you know, layering and the embellishments and there's just so much to that that you know i hadn't even thought about before but kudos to those of you that make cards and enjoy making cards and kind of have you know experience doing that i'm really enjoying the process and learning as i go but yeah i i was finding that everything i wanted to make was just trying to figure out how to make greeting cards so are any of you card makers? Do you enjoy it? Is that a hobby you've always had? Or do you kind of go back and forth like I seem to be doing now where, you know, I get these moments where I want to just sort of make junky style, you know, kind of crafts, repurposing a lot of pieces. And then, you know, when I go back to my card making, it's pulling out my really nice papers and die cuts and that sort of thing. I'm also noticing that I don't do a lot of stamping and most of the cards I see there's a lot of stamping involved and so that's um, a whole other area that you know I haven't really gotten into like I will use my stamps here and there periodically like as an embellishment on a piece but I don't necessarily pull them out often and I find a lot of the people I've been watching you know their main focus for a card is the stamp and then coloring it in and oh my gosh like there's I could just you know get completely stuck trying to to make cards like that and it is quite time consuming for some of them I find I know there are other videos where they uh, do a lot of the quick cards you know just grab a few scrap pieces add them to um, your card base and then just add you know your sentiment or an embellishment and you're done so there's definitely a lot of variety, but like I said, I, I find that now I'm, I'm sort of a little bit more gravitating towards that for some reason. So anyways, let me know if you are card makers and if you enjoy that process as well, leave a comment below and let me know if you've got any tips and tricks for that as well. Okay, so here I'm adding another layer to this um, junky envelope, a little uh, thin piece of this um, sewing pattern paper. Um, I do like to add this periodically to my little junky projects because it's quite easy to add to a project. Like you saw here, I just added um, a bit of glue to my base and then it gets stuck quite quickly and it's so easy to remove. And I do want to open up those windows, but right now I'm limited with my tools. So I'm just going to use what I have and I'm just going to cut a little kind of slit here to remove it from the um, the window on the envelope because I do want the windows to remain so that when I stick my card my journaling card in there or my tag that you can kind of see inside and and you'll see the design kind of peeking through I also think I'm going to be um, you know kind of decorating this a little bit more as I go but for now I'm just trying to um, open up the windows so that I can see what what I'll be putting in the back okay so Getting back to card making, uh, I have also noticed that there are a lot of people using card kits and that is, um, I guess, these put together different card designs and 
they sort of send you the details on how to put those together and then you end up you know having sets of cards that are ready made have any of you used any of those and what do you think of them i've seen that quite a lot um, actually that's probably what i see the most is with companies that are doing that and then you know you make 10 cards all at once or 12 cards all at once from that same kit that looks kind of interesting to me but i'm not sure um you know if um if that's something that any of you have used or you would recommend as well um, i think obviously that would be really easy to make cards because they already come pre-designed for you but i think for me right now i'm really liking the idea of you know, coming up with uh, something that I can put together with the things I have at home with the design papers I have and my embellishments and I would say stickers and die cuts and that sort of thing. So that's another um, thing that I've seen a lot and I'm not sure if that's something that I want to give a try. Okay, so right now I'm pulling out some of my stickers that I've been wanting to use. I think I want to just add a little bit of decoration to this little flip out envelope. Uh, these, I believe, are stickers from Taper Logi. I will link their um, store below. I do have a coupon code for them if you're interested in purchasing anything. I did do an unboxing and I really had fun with their products. So I'm going to be using, of course, some of them in here. These large stickers were also from their shop and I ended up using one of the roses, I believe, in my last project on the cover. And they're perfect because they're so large. So they cover a really nice large area. Um, and like for the journal covers, like the eight and a half by 11, you know, when you fold it in half, it's a really nice cover on the front, a nice large size. And these stickers are perfect for that because they really cover a lot of square footage. So um, if you haven't seen those, I will link those below. I found them really nice. And so for this one, you see, I'm just going to add a piece to the front here of the window. So there is some sort of embellishment on this envelope window but it's not necessarily taking up and covering the whole thing. I still want to see through it, but I think it's nice because the sticker itself, um, you can see through it. So, you know, it's not covering up that window fully. There's just a little bit of decoration in the center here. So anyways, I hope this turns out because I really wanted to give this a go. And as you can see here, when I'm trying to stick a large sticker, I don't take the backing off all of, all of it right away. I start with a little corner and then move my way down so that I know I get a nice smooth, you know, adherence to my page and things don't get all warped and wonky when I'm putting that down. And then this little box of stickers, there are so many stickers in this box, my friends. And I'm definitely going to be trying to, you know, kind of use them to decorate and embellish my projects because there's quite a few of these to go around in these boxes. All right, so once I get that done, then I think we'll be moving on to, maybe I'll do a little bit on the cover, we'll see. You know, I think I'm going to decorate the second flip out envelope, um, the junk mail envelope, so I think that's what we'll do. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, the one that has the sort of opening at the top, but I'm flipping it you know, kind of upside down so I can have a tuck at the bottom and then I can use this top part as pockets. I could seal this up and then maybe open it up at the top if I wanted like a top pocket uh, for this, but I think I'll leave it as is just for now. Um, but of course you've got options as to, you know, if you want additional openings on this envelope. So here I'm just going to probably decorate the envelope first before I glue it down, but I'm thinking I'll probably be making it uh, it's sort of like a flip out as well with part of it, part of the envelope being attached to the inside cover here as well. So as I'm working on this project, I'm thinking about the couple things that I've been considering going back to. One of them is a smash book. And I don't know if you remember those from a couple years ago, maybe more than a couple years ago. Um, uh, basically, they're like glue books. They would come with, you know, the 
the different types uh, and colors of pages. Mostly I would find them like a scrapbook paper, so a nice thick paper to start with. Then they were ring bound, so you can you know fold them flat and everything else. And then of course, the whole purpose of it was just to grab whatever you wanted to and just sort of glue it onto a page. I guess that's why they were called smash books. So I'm assuming it's very similar to a glue book. It just had a different name. I did end up finding one or two of them, I think at a dollar store at that time. And so I kind of kept them because I was already working on my own kind of glue book style, but I kept them because I really wanted to sort of wait until I was ready to start to start on one. But now I'm thinking I want to make my own again. So I might start that process soon. And then I'll probably show you if you want to see how I put one together. Um, I think it will be ring bound with my little cinch. I think it's called a cinch, you know, um, the little coils, that kind of stuff. So I think I'll put some of those together because um, I really like the idea of, you know, how nice and flat they lay. Okay, so getting back to this, I decided to use the napkin for, you know, kind of decorating this envelope. I find that it's so much easier to cover something really quick. And it also is a lot of like really forgiving if you don't cut it straight or you kind of tear it up a little bit because it's a napkin. It just gives it a nice little design. And also you can kind of, you know, move things around a little bit more. So I'll be covering the front and back of this envelope with this napkin design. And I did mention at the beginning of the video that I have a, a quick tip on how to remove napkin layers without tearing any of the layers. And I'm really happy. Um, so easy to do, my friends. One of the quickest things I've ever done with, uh, you know, removing napkin layers. And then of course you get to play around with your napkins. And then the other thing too is I'm not using any kind of decoupage medium here. You see that I'm just using a glue stick. I find that napkin glues very well with a glue stick. If you add enough to your surface, then uh, it will glue nicely down. And then I personally love the texture of the napkin on paper, so I don't like to decoupage over it or seal it in any way. So just adding the glue itself, um, I find is sufficient to keep it on the page. And of course, you know, if you've got a corner here and there that's coming up, you can just continue to to glue it with your wet glue. My wet glue does not warp pages. So it's not like that school glue that we used to have when we were little, that um, it's just very wet. The glue I like to use is a wet glue, but it does not you know, cause any damage to your paper, which is really nice. So here again, I'm just cutting out my window because I do want to see the window of that envelope. So when I'm adding, you know, whatever it is I'm going to add in there, you can see through that as well. And since I just remembered, one of my last videos, I shared some new to me tools, which are really fun. And one of the last tools that I showed you was like clasps that you can attach to your pages. Someone asked me if they are permanent and I have found out that they are not. So you can actually remove them and reuse them, which is fantastic because like I said, anything that's new to me, that is a different way to bind paper. I am all for it. And so this new tool that I showed you, um, and I will link that video below if you haven't seen it. I'm really loving the idea of being able to, you know, clamp pages together, but then that can be taken out and reused, which I think is amazing. All right, and then the, the other thing I wanted to mention was I have made um, journals with altered books before, and I have several that are loose style journals. I absolutely love those. Recently, I was going through my box of completed journals and I saw them again and I got so excited. So that's where the whole thought came back for my smash books and the glue books. And so I'm starting to, you know, kind of put one together. But also I think there's a an easier way to use some, you know, a, a book to make it into that. So I will show you that in another video very soon. 
um, because I'm really excited about, you know, being able to repurpose items to use them as smash books or glue books, especially for those of us or those of you that, are, you know, don't want to start from scratch or, you know, figure out how to bind something or gather pages to make a journal. Uh, I think this one will be so much easier to do and I really think you'll enjoy that as well. So I'll have that ready, um, that video coming up soon because I've been, you know, adding my pages and using it as like a smash book slash glue book. Um, but I thought I would kind of uh, maybe record some of those videos and, um, and show you that process as well. So as I finish this envelope to clip it on, I think after we do this, I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do a little bit, you know, a little extra stuff to the cover. Then, you know, we'll see how that turns out. I'm thinking I really like the design of this napkin and how it covers, you know, most of the envelope. Um, I will be adding this envelope uh, and just gluing three sides so I can make a side pocket. But then when you open up the envelope, you can use the whole thing and, you know, tuck things in as well. So it's it's kind of like a multi-purpose pocket, I think, which is really nice. It also has the window here, which is something that I wanted to make sure that I could keep. So as you can see, this is coming together really nicely still a lot of tuck spots and little flip outs that I would like to add. So for the cover, I decided to use some of those giant stickers that I recently got in my Taper Logi um, unboxing. And I will link that video below, as I mentioned before, as well as uh, coupon codes and also uh, link to any of the supplies that I have shown you here, because I know some of you, you know, are interested in that. Um, this big label came from, I think, my Your Creative Studio most recent unboxing, I think. Okay, and I think I'm, I'm kind of almost at 30 minutes on this video, so I think I'm going to stop um, after I finish decorating a little bit more. And then the next part of the video, which I will come back with very soon, I will add the additional tucks and, um, you know, kind of pockets that we will be adding to this folio slash it could also be a journal cover then i'll show you that secret pocket and then we'll decorate a little more i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have don't forget to give it a thumbs up click that notification bell to know when i have another video i will link uh, the videos i mentioned in the description box below and i will definitely try and put that on my blog as well because i know that sometimes that's quicker for a lot of you to find something that i've talked about so thank you so much for joining me i hope you like this quick process as i said i've made videos like this before different ways of making these folios but you all wanted to see this one so i thought i would walk you through that process all right thank you for joining me and i will see you soon bye